Okay, so if you if you look at a set of data and the the data goes continues to rise the whole way or continues to fall the whole way, you have a linear equation based on what we've done so far. However, in this case, from zero to two it rises and it keeps rising up to four, but then it starts to fall. It goes back down. So your your information is going up or your values are going up and then down. So that's modeling a parabola or a quadratic regression. And so you do need to be able to identify visually what you're looking at and then be able to find an equation for the line of best fit for that as well. Okay, so let's say we take this, this set of data and we, I ask you to find the line of best fit. Okay, or the trend line. Right, there's two ways that you can do this, right? You guys can use your calculators or you can use the Excel spreadsheet. When we did linear regression, how many of you used your calculators? A couple. How many used Excel? I'm assuming the rest of you have calculator brains and you just did it on your own. You can do it in your head. Okay, you need to choose one of those two. I, um, I'm going to go through both of them in uh, how to work through quadratic regression. All right, so if we have this set and we want to find the line of best fit, the first step is to enter the data. All right, so in order to enter the data, you need to go to the data matrix editor. And you need to enter all the X's on one column and all the y, corresponding Y's on another column. Okay, so if we go to our data matrix editor, for me, I have to hit this apps button. For you guys, it'll be those icons that are on as soon as you turn your calculators on. Okay, if you, it, this, there's a built-in functionality to clear your whole screen. So if you hit F1 and then number 8, you can clear your screen and then just enter the information that you need. Okay, so I'm going to go down, enter my X's, so 0 to... 4, 6, and 8. And then I'm going to go enter my corresponding y's oops, as well. In this case, 3, 28, 40, 37, and 26. All right, once you enter the data on your data matrix editor, what you can then do is find the equation for that line of best fit. And the place to do that is right here in this F5 Calculate tab. And when you hit F5, you're going to choose linear regression. I'm sorry, the quadratic regression. So the calculation type, if you scroll through and look, 5 was the linear regression that we've already done, but this isn't a linear model because it goes up and then back down, so it's a quadratic model. So we go down to number 9. So the, the calculation type is number 9, quadratic regression. And now make sure you don't mistake that with a the next one below that, which is quartic regression. That means uh, the highest power is 4. And we don't want that. We want the quadratic regression for this. So choose quadratic regression. Identify uh, the column that you want for x's, which is oops, c1. The column you want for your y's, c2. Hey, it asks, do you want to store this in the... Uh, the Y editor, and you do. Again, the advantage to that is you can evaluate the functions later with more accuracy and, and more simply. And when you hit enter, it gives you the variables for your equation. So because I chose quadratic regression, it's going to give me the form Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C, the standard form for a quadratic. And then it's going to give me the, the coefficients for each of those. So my answer is going to be y equals negative 1 point, uh, let's say 5536x squared. My b value is 15.1786 approximately x. And my c value was 3.3714 approximately. All right, so the advantage and disadvantage to using your TI-89. The advantage is it allows you to evaluate your function more easily. So let's say 
we took this and I asked you to uh, find the value of y when x is equal to 10. Okay. If you if you did this on your calculator, it's nice and easy. From the home screen, we can use function notation here. So y1 of 10, we can evaluate it. This means you're going to take the value of 10, plug it in for x everywhere an x exists in the y1 function, which is stored as this equation type. So I get my answer, negative 0.2. Okay, now, would this be considered extrapolation or interpolation? if I was asking you to evaluate for x is 10. Remember, anything that falls outside of it is extrapolation. So outside, so this is also extrapolation. Okay, extra means beyond or outside. Okay. And anything that falls in between is called interpolation. So if I had asked you to uh, find the value when x is equal to 3. Now that's included in between here. So anything that falls within the range of uh, the domain of your x's, 0 to 8, that would be interpolation. Okay, and so you could do the same thing. We could evaluate for 3 very easily. Just replace the 10 with a 3 and we get our answer 34.925. Okay, so that's the advantage to using your calculator for this. The disadvantage is it takes a little bit longer to enter all the information. Method, see if you can find the line of best fit for this graph, or this information, please, and on the calculator. Okay, so we first need to enter our data. So we go to our data matrix editor and just use the current again even if we just did what we did the X's are all the same 0 2 4 6 8 we just change the corresponding Y's so 4 23 30 25 and 7 okay, and then you're going to hit this F5 calculate tab we're going to choose the calculation type of, of quadratic regression which is number 9 make sure it says quadratic not quartic Identify the variable or the column number, so C1 for the x's, C2 for the y's. We are going to store this so we have access to it later if we need it. And we get our equation here, which should be conf confirm what we got on Excel, which is negative 1.5357 x squared, our b value 12.6857 x and then our C value 3.9143 approximately.